Have you been searching for a podcast? Do you want to learn from some great content creators? Well, you've come to the right place. Indie Podcaster with your host, Jeff Townsend, the Indie Podcast Father. Hey, this is Jeff Townsend and welcome to Indie Podcaster, episode number 70. How crazy is that? 70 episodes I've got to make with you guys. It's, it's been an amazing ride. But this will be the last episode of season one, and I will come back in 2023, and I will start more of a seasonal approach for this show. Why, may you ask? Well, by now, you listening know that I do struggle with some mental health problems. This will give me the time needed to kind of unwind and relax and probably come back in a better place. That's the thought, at least, right? And second, this will give me time to work on other projects that I've been working on. There's a couple different things up the pipeline, so more to come on that. But more importantly, I just want to thank all of you for all the amazing support over the last year. It's been incredible. On this episode, you're actually going to hear me reflect on the 70 episodes of any podcaster so far. And I do this with Ed Havens from the 80s Movies Podcast. Can we do a Q&A sort of situation here? Him and Tanner Campbell from Good Morning Podcasters put together some questions for me. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it kind of gives you a really a good summary overall of my view as a person and and content creation, especially in regards to podcasting. So I really do hope you enjoy it. I want to remind you, keep listening every Monday and on those Twitter spaces. It's been going amazing. Podcasting Power Hour every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Check out my profile on Twitter, podcast underscore father and set the reminder. I'm tweeting about it all the time. You can't miss it. We chat with industry professionals and other great content creators. We talk about podcasting, so make sure you get in on that. But again, seriously, this is an emotional moment for me as I take a break from Indie Podcaster for a few months. The people I've got to meet through this has just been amazing. I've done like, I don't know, probably going on 15 different podcasts that I've been a part of over the last 15 years or whatever. And this one's been extra special. So I especially want to thank everybody in the Indie Podcast community that we've built. I love you all. And thank you for all your support always. And I'll, of course, I will always be here for you regardless. I don't want to waste too much time. We're going to go ahead and jump into this Q&A. But again, this is Jeff Townsend, and I thank you all for joining me on this journey. Hello, and welcome to Indie Podcaster. I'm your host, Edward Havens. What? Wait, hold on a sec. I'm not your normal host. It's normally Jeff Townsend, except we're doing a very special episode today in the honor of his first anniversary of posting his first episode of Indie Podcaster, Jeff has invited me to come on to interview him. How's that for a twist? Mm. So with me today is Jeff Townsend, the host, the one, the only Indie Podcaster. How are you doing today, Jeff? I'm doing well. I appreciate you taking the time to do this with me, Ed. I know your, your, your dogs are waiting to go potty, so I appreciate you making that sacrifice. And tell your dogs thank you. Uh, they're they're actually asleep right now because uh, I create a warm and comfortable uh, space for them. I've got mm. Dexter in his bed over here, and I've got River behind me on the floor. They're just they're happy as can be right now, partially because there's no uh, fireworks going off yet. True, true. That's like a America that'll go on for days. America. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, so. We have some questions from me, and we have some questions from our friend Tanner Campbell of Good Morning Podcasters and Stoicism Podcast and many, many other things. You almost said podcasting sucks, didn't you? I did almost say podcasting mm -hmm. sucks because uh, that's how it was introduced to me. So my first question to you, my friend, who is Jeff Townsend? Oh, man. Jeff Townsend is just a... I'm a normal everyday guy. I don't just an average guy, I guess you could say. And that might be why this podcast has kind of worked, right? Like I've been creating content for a long time, but ultimately I'm just like you. I'm just like any other guy, any other woman, any other man, you know, however you want to word it, but I'm just an average everyday guy with a, a family man that's working hard. Oh. That's how it defined me. It's pretty simple. Uh, well, when you showed up on Twitter in March, 2021, you were just the podcast father. Why did you start with the pseudonym and why have you started coming out of that shell in the last couple months? Well, 
originally the plan was actually to help podcasters, uh, small new podcasters. And, you know, when I, when I came up with the podcast father, it was by no means saying, Hey, like I'm the best podcaster. Like, and I know that's how you can take it at face value, but it was more or less like a, I wanted to be a nurturing figure, like a, a helping hand, you know, like a, like a father would be to his child, uh, of, of new podcasters or just podcasters having and just struggles, you know, cause I've had moderate success doing it for sure. So I wanted to make sure that I gave back to the community like people did for me 15 years ago or whatever. So that was my thought. And I thought, Hey, I'm going to start a website and I'm going to share this content that people are making kind of like, you know, like blog form newsletter. But then I realized that Jeff, you, you don't, you don't like writing that much. So uh, the more I got into it, the kind of, I got that bug. You know what I mean? We all get that bug to uh, create more content. Mm, I do know that bug. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, hey, I'm just going to do this in podcast form. And uh, I actually just created a Twitter account first to see how it would go. And it took off from there pretty quickly. Uh, you, you, you guys in the community, everybody was really great to me. And it just that's how it started. And then I was like, hey, let's do a podcast about this. And the podcast has changed over time. I'm sure we'll touch up on that later. But yeah, that's how it started. It was just a simple concept of helping people. And then why have you decided to start pulling out of that pseudonymous, pseudon, whatever, the pseudonym and start going more by Jeff? Like I said, I've created content for a long time and I've had a couple instances of uh, uh, people getting my address and stuff. Maybe when I created a little bit more controversial uh, content back in the day, but and I didn't really like ditch that part. I, I wanted to make sure that I got the indie in there, the independent in there. So I've kind of added indie in front of it. So, you know, you'll hear on my show, say indie podcast father, you'll hear somebody introduce me. It's indie podcast father. So to me, it was just more of a way to identify with the independent content creator community, you know, the independent podcasters. So that that's why I kind of segued to that. It was a strategic plan that I had a little bit as far as, you know, launching for a launch, uh, you know, my brand that I started. So, you know, personal relationships with a lot of, uh, a lot of you have my phone number or we talk all the time. So, and it's no, or Facebook friends or whatever. So it's no secret by any means. And I kind of had a job where I was, um, place of employment was employed by the government. So I was respectful of that as well. You joined Twitter in March, 2021. And with a little over 15 months, uh, you've already hit 10,000 followers and started uh, your uh, super follower program and got some super followers already. Uh, why do you think you've been so embraced by the Twitter podcasting community? I've had been around 13,000 for a while now because I just haven't been as active on Twitter. I got to 10,000 within nine months or something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe a little bit before. Okay. But I think I was I was embraced by the community because there was a need for somebody to be a helping hand and guide people. Cause when you first start a podcast, none of us know what we're doing. Let's be honest. And there's a lot of people will send you in a million different directions, make things very complicated. And I just wanted to be the, the reinforcement of the, I guess as Bobby Knight would say the fundamentals, <laughs> that, that was my focus. Really. I, th I thought there was a need for it because I know when I started, creating content and podcast form. It was newer and there wasn't anything like there is today. So uh, there's all sorts of great resources today, but I wanted to be there for people. I, don't know, I guess you could say face to face, but you know what I mean? Be able to be reachable at all times. And I wanted to make things simple because there's a lot of people that uh, like, you know, I, I love, we love Tanner Campbell, but he uh, tends to, and he'll even admit it, overcomplicate things. And I just try to be the uh, opposite of that. And I think that's why I work well with people, you know, like him. Does that make sense? I mean, I just, I just wanted to be a support chain, a help chain for the community. And the more I got into it, Ed. No, I was just going to say, I, I know exactly where you're coming from, because for me, I'm about to hit my third anniversary. And when you showed up, I was still a small time podcaster. And I was kind of just making my way through and you and you introduced me to Tanner's work yep, and, and several other people who like Ariel and this and Blatt. So I understand where you're coming from because you have helped me probably as much as anyone has in terms of becoming 
uh, more focused as a podcaster, trying to become a better podcaster. So thank yeah. you for that. We are recording this episode on July 5th, 2022, the one year anniversary of posting your first episode mm -hmm. with Captain from the True Crime Garage. So first, congratulations on that, on your first anniversary. My question is, of all your guests, and I am not looking for personal validation, which of your guests do you feel <laughs> your listeners have learned the most about podcasting from? Which definitely excludes me. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, man, I'll just start out by saying that the true crime podcast interviewer, the, the true crime podcasters that I interviewed are, have a lot of downloads in comparison to lesser known people. Uh, but I think... You hit up on a couple of the names earlier, uh, you know, Ariel Nissenblatt, Tanner Campbell. Those are the two people that I've probably heard the most from my listeners and, and, and my, the community as far as, hey, like, thank you very much for introducing them to me. They've taught me a lot. They've been very beneficial. I thank you very much for that. So those two stand out. But I think there's other episodes that it's like a feel good moment for me because I've inter interviewed a few illustrators and stuff. Mm -hmm. And although we may not have talked about podcasting, they took something away from the content creator's story, the artist's story. And sometimes, you know, and I always say this, I feel like, sound like a broken record. You can learn more from a good story than me giving you steps on how to do something or somebody giving you steps on how to do something. So I take pride in each and every one. And I hear generally hear, you know, good compliments about them all. But back to your question, yeah, I think those two people were, as far as like uh, on our community, the most well received as far as the, what they've learned about podcasting, right? Because they did what you want them to do. Like I, I want my listeners to go and check out and support the people that I'm talking to. And that just, that just happened in droves. It was a credible amount of people. So I'm really happy that I could make that connection to you guys and, you know, the Ariel Nissenblatt's and the Tanner Campbell's of the world, even though they weren't the most downloaded episodes, like I said, but they seem to be longstanding relationships for all you guys, those connections. So I'm proud of that. You've said multiple times you've been doing this since before the word podcast even was created. So looking forward, where do you think podcasting will be as an industry in five years? In 2027, where do you see this thing called podcasting? And I don't, I don't know if it's before it was, uh, and a matter of fact, I know it's not before it was made, the term. I just okay. hadn't heard it, and I don't think a hell of a lot of people had, to be completely honest with you. But, you know, uh, I'll just start out in the kind of beginning, and I want to slide into the future. Okay. It was really a good way to create content at an independent level, just kind of like we would talk about indie music artists, independent films, which you're very in tune with, Ed. It was a good way to do that as far as a talking point content creation. So when it was new, there wasn't a lot of information on it. There was no guide on it. And I'm not one to put a guide on anything anyway, but it was a whole other world than it is now. It was, it was unheard of. And a lot of people just would call it internet radio. They'd kind of package it with internet radio. The radio people would say we weren't good enough to be on the radio, which maybe is true. You know, I was fired or, <laughs> or relocated to a different department on a radio. But it had a weird reception then. Then just to see it grow over time and how it's implemented into the electronic devices and the growth of the industry is incredible. So I expect it to continue to grow. I'm big into seeing where the podcasting 2.0 and the index and all the work that Adam Adam Curry and his team is doing. So I think there's going to be a lot of things that's going to grow. So I see it being more of a, because it's in its early stages now. I mean, my definition as far as the business goes. So I see it being more profitable and I see continue to see businesses be more acceptable of it and utilize it. So I expect as we get further away from radio, mostly, I know you still uh, listen to Rush Limbaugh on a and before he died, but. I, I, I hate to admit it, but there was a very short time in the very late 80s when I used to listen to Rush Limbaugh for about 10 minutes on my drive Really, my house in Santa Cruz to where I worked in San Jose, the only station I could get because you know, there's lots of hills it's, and there's it's mountainous and there's lots of trees. The only station I can get was the station that Rush Limbaugh happened to be in the 80s. And yeah, maybe you'll edit all this out. I don't I don't care. Probably some of it, but it's all right. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, uh, I, don't, I mean, I, today I listen mostly to uh, Sirius XM. You know, I will say one thing, though, and this kind of answered your question. 
I would like to see it continue to grow more than satellite radio did or has, because there's a certain point in time when you saw, you know, satellite radio la- leveled out pretty quickly. I think you know what I'm saying. And I would like to see the peak of podcast podcasting be even higher and continue the momentum. Cause I think we don't hear about satellite radio like we did uh, as we got closer to 2010, for example. So I, I think it has a possibility to go even higher. And I, I think that's because you develop real relationships and you feel like you know the content creators that you're listening to, right? The radio stations are going through the motions. You like certain DJs and, and, and I get that. But I think there's a deeper connection with podcast listeners and the podcasters creating the content. In my opinion, at least, that's how it is for me, and it that's how it has been. I f- I fully agree on that. If someone wants to talk to me or talk to you, you know, I've got less than a thousand followers. You've got thirteen or fourteen thousand. That person can make a much quicker impression and have a a real relationship with the host of a show. No, no, I get your point for sure. So, do you actually think though, as it continues to grow, do you think that people are going to stick with podcasting? who maybe jumped in during the pandemic because they were at home. They didn't have places to go. They didn't have a place to work. Now that things are starting to get back to normal, they're not there yet, but they're starting to. Do you think uh, we're going to start seeing a lot of podcasts kind of disappear as people get back into their old routines? Or do you think that a lot of podcasters are going to stick with it? Well, I think we've seen a drop off, you know, when the Edison research team, they do a great job with the infinite dial that releases data. Months ago, when we looked at 2021, you could see a little bit of a drop off in in, in podcast listeners, certainly from 2020 because of the pandemic. It's going to be the same with people that are creating podcasts because one simple fact is a lot of us are not able to work at home like we were. You know, when I had my previous job, I was working at home for an extended amount of time. This one, you know, in person. So I do think that you'll see a drop off. But I also think that I don't think it's going to be too significant because there's certain platforms that have made it extremely easy to create a podcast because like sound like a beating a dead horse here. But back in 2006, for example, <laughs> the RSS feed and all that, it was a, it was it was a bitch. Not not many people knew anything about it. So I think as we've made this so easy to do, I don't think we're going to see a significant drop off. However, I do think we'll continue to see the same rate of the uh, pod fade that we currently see, you know, around that 10 episode mark or whatever. I don't think that will change. I do think less people are making it, but I'm not predicting like a major drop off by any means, because as it gains in popularity, it's definitely appealing to start one, not only for an individual creator, but for businesses as well. Um, So now I have a few questions that were submitted by Tanner Campbell. So uh, I need to get into my Tanner Campbell phase. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Sound just like him. I'm not going to try to impersonate him. Uh, So Tanner's first question is, uh, how do you manage a full-time job being a girl dad with three daughters and still find the time to encourage the indie podcaster community as well as you do? And he also wonders, what are your sacrifices? Because he presumes there must be many sacrifices that you're making. Yeah, there are. And how do I do it? It's very difficult because I do work full-time. I make money on my podcast, but not enough to supplement an income and everything completely. So it's a lot of long nights as far as actually putting, I mean, one thing I did, and I'll be proud to admit it, I hired an editor, right? Because I could not, I got to the point where I could not keep up with the content that I needed to play to put out every week. So that's one answer that (laughs) made a big difference. But as far as creating the content, it's very difficult. When I'm recording introduction, sponsor ads, or and all that, that is late night stuff. Way past midnight, put it that way. When everybody's asleep, I'm in here in my little sanctuary creating content. The people submit a lot of, I don't want to say submit, they do submit questions to me on my website and they also submit requests to be on my podcast. But the Twitter DMs are difficult to keep up with. So I, I always feel bad that I can't get to all of them always, but... It takes a lot of time. And when I have some free time throughout the day, I try to converse and answer them. But I think also one thing that I've learned to do, and this has been a big one, I know that I can't answer all the questions, right? I'm not the master of everything. I'm a pretty simple concept kind of person. 
like you talked about Tanner Campbell and Ariel. I've become pretty good about sending creators to different experts. And I'll, and I'm not an expert. I'll call them experts, for example. I've been pretty good about introducing you guys in the community, guys and gals in the community to different people that could help you maybe even better than I can in some areas. So that's been a big part too, like surrounding myself with people that know a hell of a lot more than I do. And the community is great with that too, by the way. I mean, it's a great community. How many other industries can you, can you talk to the people, you know, that are so impactful like we do in the podcast industry? You know, I've talked to James Cridlin, Mark Asquith, just people that are very impactful as far as in the industry professionally. And that's just not something you can do a whole lot in other industries. So that's a long winded answer, but Hey, you, I'd make a lot of freaking sacrifices. I don't get much sleep as you know, Ed. It makes my work day a little bit longer if I'm answering questions, to be honest. But it's something that I, it's important to me to do it. So I make time for it. And I do feel bad. My family does sac- make sacrifices too. And it's led to some issues. Uh, so for me, you know, there's a fine balance that's really hard to maintain. And I don't know if I'll ever find that. I don't know if many people do and may think they do. But as the uh, holes start to pop out and more water continues to come out, another hole pops up, more water continues to come out, it becomes harder. You know what I'm talking about here? You could picture me like trying to plug the holes, right? I mean, water's coming out and I can't stop it. But I got to get better about that myself. More automating of things, more time management. But it's just pure sacrifice, like you said. I give up a lot of my life for it. Tanner's next question is, uh, to those who would say podcasting is easy. Depends what you're doing with your podcast, I guess. If you're just getting on your phone, recording with your buddies and putting it straight on a platform like Anchor, it might be pretty easy. But if you're in that phase where you want to grow your podcast for a business purpose or just, hey, I want to I want to influence people positively. I have a positive message to send. In your case, Ed, you want to spread the word about these lost, hidden 80s gems of independent films. I think. That is where it's at. And that's not easy. You got to spend a lot of time researching. Like you just said on the last question, I got to spend a lot of time helping people. You've got to continue to have the mindset of, hey, when you wake up every day, I want to learn something new today. There's a reason his podcast was called Podcasting Sucks. <laughs> and that's, yep. because, that's because it's a whole of a lot of work. And uh, for some reason, indie podcasters don't want to spend a lot of money. They might have habits like golfing or drinking beer. That's way more expensive, but they would rather splurge on those things than the hobby of podcasting. We're all cheap in the community, I guess. I can't say much myself. Uh, my sponsors are good to me. They take care of me. I can say that um, as someone who's retired and uh, ha- his only income is the trivia games that he hosts a couple nights a week, uh, it's hard to have to come up with a several hundred dollars to do a a real advertising. But I think that's the thing. You got to be willing to try new things. You got to be willing to continue to learn because it's not easy, but it's just like life, Ed. It's what you make it, you know, Uh, it's just try to keep having a positive attitude. And as you know, it's not easy to do because it is a grind. It's really just trying to make it create ways to make it easier. And uh, the flip side of that question, Tanner's next question is to those who would say podcasting is too hard. What would you say? I would say it's not it's it's not too hard is it to per se. It's hard, yes. Uh, if I can do it when I started doing it, I think people can do it now, right? There's way more resources. If you can do it, Ed, no offense, we're average everyday guys, right? So it's not too hard. Now, where it becomes difficult is how complicated you're going to make it and what you're willing to do with it. And what your expectations are when you're creating the content. Because I have different expectations than you do. You have different expectations than somebody who's brand new does. I think it's what expectations you put on yourself. And I'm one that I put a lot of expectations on myself. So it does make it hard. But it's not It's not too hard. I think if you surround yourself with the right people, I think anybody or most people can make a podcast. Now, now a good podcast, You know, I'm not going to go down that road right now. <laughs> If you could, how easy is it to create or hard is it to create a good podcast? That's another story for another time. But to create a podcast, certainly itself is not difficult. It's what you make of it from there and what you want to do with the content. I don't think it's a difficult thing to do at all. The most difficult prospect in 
coming up with a show is literally coming up with an idea. For me, it's just a simple matter of figuring out what I'm going to do. What I would have done differently is I think I would have spent a couple of months doing more research on what other people were doing. Everybody's covering the same darn movies. And I'm going in a completely different route, not just talking about older movies, not just talking about forgotten movies, but going into the whys and the hows of how they were created because I find that stuff fascinating. And so far, uh, a small but devoted audience has just has thought I've done a pretty good job. I don't know where I was going there. Okay, so uh, Tanner's next question, I'm going to try not to take offend it, any offense on. Should a podcaster approach podcasting as a hobby, he asks. Yeah, I think at the core heart of it all, yeah. I think you should enjoy it, which is ho- typically what a hobby is. But there's nothing wrong with approaching it is that I certainly don't fully approach it as that. But I think in the in the heart of it all, we enjoy doing it for the most part. So I think you should uh, be willing to approach it as that, especially if you're just the common indie podcaster. Now, if you're a corporation or business, it's not going to be right because you're going to do it to grow your brand. If you're smart, you are. But I think there's nothing wrong with it. So it's kind of a hard question to answer. And I think that's why he asked it. I think for the the most people getting into it that are just small time content creators, yeah, it, they should approach it as a hobby, but uh, strategically, of course. And sometimes it changes for people. It might start out as a hobby, but I think you should strategically approach it because uh, I, I play golf sometimes and I certainly have strategic planning on the golf course, what I'm going to do, right? So right. I think it's the same way. Be smart about it if you're serious about it. And there's nothing wrong with it being a hobby. And if it want, if you feel like it can or you want it to grow to so, something more, you got to be prepared to put in the work and all the things that we've been talking about throughout this conversation so far. Uh, and then his final question is a, a two-parter. Uh, do you teach any affordable online courses for newbies who haven't started podcasting yet? And whether you have or have not, why should? or should not incoming podcasters consider this sort of thing when they're first starting out? This is something that we're talking a lot about Tanner in this episode. Oh my gosh. Is the ego? Oh, it's his questions. Yeah. Something that we talk about a lot, him, Greg and I, and Tanner frequently makes the comment that I give, not give too much, but I don't, I'm not getting in return from the community as much as I should, or could be, I guess, could be a better way to word it. I've done stuff before with different content, but for me, a lot of it comes down to time and I would need to understand some of the ideas that he's talked about a little bit better. I don't think there's anything wrong with somebody coming into it and and paying some money to do it. I think a couple hundred dollars is reasonable if you're serious about podcasting. I I think that's reasonable. I think whatever amount you want to pay is. For myself, it's really finding the time and my priorities. Uh, My priorities of are and continue to be over the last year, interaction, personable interaction with you and with others on social media, on website, whatever it may be, text message for some people. I do need to start getting better about thinking about things like that. I've just kind of piggybacked off sponsorships and stuff to um, cover any costs and then, you know, getting the additional income. But I need to figure out a better long-term plan for investing into it. Uh, I guess I just never thought when I really, because I did go into this with a strategy, this indie podcaster scenario that as you said earlier, podcast father, but I certainly didn't do it with the planning of the financial gain from courses and stuff. I'm not one to to always feel extremely comfortable giving out, sitting down and recording a video, for example, and giving out a, exclusive feedback or, I mean, I guess I'm comfortable with feedback, but providing details on how to steps. I don't like how some people define podcasting or what it is or what you should or shouldn't do. So it's a little bit tough for me because I go different ways on things. And I believe in it's a pretty wide open definition to me. I'm certainly not one to put limits to it, but that's a really good question. And that's what he gives me shit for all the time. (laughs) You know, you should get what you give, right? In theory, not always the case in this community. It's a different kind of community. Uh, And I've seen instances where people get pretty pissed off when people are trying to make money, which is weird. Not a lot of other industry or communities like that that I've been in. But this particular one, you got there's a fine line on uh, being a helping hand and being it, making it look like you're trying to 
sell snake oil to somebody, you know? Uh, <laughs> I, I do know. I've, I've seen some of the, uh, the, the back and forth between Can, uh, Tanner and others about some of the things that he's done or mm-hmm. misconceptions about what he's actually not doing. And, you know, like the, the previous question about podcasting as a hobby, he's, that's something he's given me a little shit about too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, and I think he does it because maybe he thinks that I could make this specific show into something more than what I'm doing now. Um, for me, it's, I'm not seeing the growth the way that I think he might think it should be growing. And then, yeah. you know, but I don't take that person, you know, so when he calls me a hobbyist, I've seen some people take that very personal and I don't take it personal because I know what he's trying to say is not an insult. What he's trying to do is he's trying to impart a certain kind of wisdom that I don't have because I am not seeing the industry from his point of view of somebody who's been in it for more than 10 years, who has created businesses out of it. So, yeah, I think that a lot of, one of the big problems in, in the indie podcasting community is that people tend to take things the wrong way when they shouldn't, that it's not always an insult when somebody says, Hey, maybe you should think about doing this. Like when Tanner did his uh, podcast audit for the show, he said some pretty interesting things. I'll leave it at that. But I didn't take it personal because I understood that he he took his time to listen to my show, to think about, based on his experience and his points of view, ways that I could make things better. Did I take everything he did to, to heart? Did I do every suggestion that he made? No. But I made enough changes where I have seen a definite improvement in my numbers since he made those suggestions. So I'm pounding yeah, on I would, your desk right now. You're so angry. I'm no, I'm not pounding at all. I'm actually just kind of tapping. I talk with my hands a lot and I'm, and I'm trying to not do that because this is audio. You've got Trump hands. Oh, oh, that'd be fighting words. <laughs> no, but I but, know what you're saying. And people, it is strange because people do take offense to it, but I think, and I receive some shitty messages from time to time from people that are professionals or not. But I think you you got to be, it's like anything else. You can't really judge a book by its cover always. If you're not paying attention to somebody's tweets and you just see that or, or, or their website or something. But when you get to know people, when you take the time to make those connections or just spend a little bit of research, time researching, you won't be as quick to make those assumptions. And that's the case. Uh, with what with what you're talking about, because there are people like myself and the others we've mentioned who give back so damn much, and we love it. And so when we try to get get some sort of um, value back from that, some people take offense to it. But if they knew the work that was going on, they certainly shouldn't and probably wouldn't be as offended as they normally are. I think that just says something to the culture that we live in as well. So I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. I know we both could, but yeah, it's, it's, it's odd. Ed. It is. All right. So um, do you have any final thoughts before we close up for the day? I do. I'm thankful for the relationships that I've built over the last year. I'm thankful that every day I continue to learn something new about content creation, about myself through content creation. And I think that's the best advice I could give people. And I've said it a million times, just Continue to learn. And if you're going to ask questions, actually listen to the advice you're getting. Take it, think about it, and and it might not be the exact same, but you can do your own thing with that advice. But at the end of the day, what I'm taking away from the last year is just this amazing community. I've had podcasts before that I've created that have had a lot more downloads, but the engagement that I get and the value that the, the, the listeners are just so, it means so much to me. And I think that's, these are relationships that are long lasting and it's a really personable community. Like I said earlier. So to me, uh, I've had podcasts that had way freaking more, uh, downloads, but this has been my favorite stuff so far. And, uh, I, I will, I will encourage others to do what I'm doing. Give back, like people did for you, like the Jeffs, the Tanners, the Gregs, the Ariels, the 
Mark Asquith, the Danny Browns, I can name a million people give back like they did for you. And that is going to be the key for podcasting moving forward. It's going to be continue to keep that kind of theme while it's growing. If not, it'll just become so mainstream like everything else. It will be tougher for people to grow, particularly indie podcasters. But I think try to really lean into your strengths like I do, because I'm not the best. I'm not an audio engineer, but lean into your strengths and try to improve a little bit every day on those and then on the things that you're not so good at. And the last thing I'll say is, like I've been saying, surround yourself with good people that can help you. That's absolutely critical. And I'm just thankful for this last year. It's literally been a year, like you said, this recording. I'm just thankful and I love the community. And whenever I whenever I question myself, because we all do creating content, I just think about the support that I get and the listeners or just the interaction engagement I get. And it's an instant relief on any sort of questions that I would have. So I'm just thankful, Ed. I'm thankful for you and everybody else. And I'm thankful that you took the time to ask these questions today. Uh, I'd like to thank my special guest, Jeff Townsend, the podcast father. I'm Edward Havens, the uh, special guest host of Indie Podcaster today. I want to thank you all for listening. Uh, If you like what you hear, make sure you listen to more of Jeff's uh, shows. And if you like 80s movies, uh, there's a lot of 80s podcasts out there. You don't have to listen to mine specifically. (laughs) Give Ed's podcast a listen. He's like a well-spoken librarian of film. I don't know how you feel about that comment, Ed, but he you're an expert. You really are. You're like a professor in 80s, particularly unknown films. I've learned so much from yours, so I'm thankful, man. Everybody should check out your podcast. Oh, I appreciate that. And um, it's uh, it's been a pleasure knowing you. It's been a pleasure learning from you. And I look forward to uh, seeing what you come up with in the near future. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening and thanks for telling a friend. More importantly, thank you for supporting independent content creators. I love this indie podcast community. And as a reminder, I'm going to take a break and I'll be back in early 2023 with season two. I can't wait. But in the meantime, I will be thinking about you. That sounds kind of weird. No, but seriously, I'm thankful for all of you and you'll always be in my mind. Until then, keep being you. Keep being great. And the question is, do I stay here? Will you be back? Are you going to come back? Will you be back? Are you coming back?